into anything. I'm not about to go out and do nothing in the shape of the world. أرأيت الذي يكذب بالدين فذلك الذي يدعو اليتيم ولا يحط على طعام المسكين فويل للمصلين الذين هم عن صلاتهم ساهون الذين هم يراءون ويمنعون المعروف وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى ويطعمون الطعام على حبه مسكين ويتيم وأثيرا وأسيرا إنما نطعمكم لوجه الله لا نريد منكم جزاء ولا شكورا إنا نخاف من ربنا يوما مبوسا منكم طريقا صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم والصلاة والسلام على خاتم النبيين Respected brothers and sisters in Islam I don't know if the sisters are here or not but in any case, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with the blessed month of Ramadan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us another, another opportunity to cleanse ourselves from the sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives in our life several opportunities to clear our past sins and to have a new start and a new beginning. And month of Ramadan is one of those months that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all the previous sins. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that whoever fast and then he fasted with faith that I am doing it because it is part of Islam. It is requirement of my Imam. And the second thing is ihtisaban, expecting from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a reward, forgiveness. If a person fasts like this, ghufir lahu ma taqaddama min zambi all his previous sins are forgiven although most of the ulama says that these are only minor sins they are forgiven but there are some ulama that they say no it includes the major sins also ibn battal and other scholars they came up that because of the fasting allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even forgives the major sins which means all the sins are forgiven and this is a lifetime opportunity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives only to few people. You know when somebody accepts Islam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives his all previous sins and we are looking at him when he is taking shahada, we and we Muslims, we are feeling envy. Look, he is just taking a new start. He has no sins on his credit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives all of us this opportunity in the month of Ramadan. We do the best and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive. My respected brothers, the ayat that I recited, uh, Surah Al Ma'un, in which main message is that those that they do not take care of the needy people, particularly those that they are in need of food, neither they take care nor they encourage others. They are just like those people, they are not believers. They are like, they are denying there is a day of judgment. Who is that person? He does not encourage others to feed the needy and the hungry. My respected brothers, the worst thing in this dunya is the hunger. And there is nothing worse than that. And probably living over here in this community, in this society, we do not have that feeling that what is hunger? There are people in the world today that they cannot find the food. And they sleep hungry. Not a few people. In hundreds, 
in millions and billions there are people like that. My spirit brothers, and the Quran, subhanAllah, it declares a war on hunger. And if we look at the ayat of the Quran al Kareem that repeatedly mention that how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to take care of the people around us. In one of the hadiths, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that if a person who has eaten his good dinner and a person in the neighborhood have slept hungry, his ibadat, worships, prayers, dua is not acceptable. In another hadith, as if he has no iman, taking care of the people around us. And then there are two things that are repeatedly mentioned and these are big blessings of Allah. One is Aman, the peace. I'm feeling secure at my home. I'm feeling peace. I'm not in danger. I can sleep with a peace of mind. This is the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My respected brothers, you believe it. There are people that they don't have this peace. And the second thing is hunger. People are there, they are not having food enough. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to recognize Him that He has blessed us with this. Uh, that who has given us peace from the fear and who has given us food for the hunger. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the characteristics of the good people. People that they are going to the Jannah. People that they are known as Ashab al Maimana, the people of the Jannah. What are their characteristics? Their characteristics is they feed other people out of love. Now the love has been described love for the people and love for the food. They are not just giving what is extra, but they are giving what they themselves like, what they themselves need, and still they are sharing it. And that is the best sadaqah that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. When a person is afraid, it may be short for me. I don't have that much. And still he shares the other people, whatever he has, that is the best thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala my spoken brothers, normally we don't recognize, realize it, but when we read the Quran systematically, Quran al kareem is amazingly solving this world problem, which the world is facing today, and that is the problem of the hunger. And the Quran takes care of this problem in steps. The Quran talks about producing more food, the Quran talks about preserving the food. Look at the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. What a planning that you need to plan that you don't have a shortage of food. And then the Quran emphasizes on distribution of food. You know why billions of people are hungry in the world today? Not because there is no food. There is enough food. But the problem is in the distribution. One third of the food produced in the world goes in waste. And there are people that they are hungry, they, it never gets to them. And the Quran emphasizes, I don't have time, but this is a very organized war that the Quran has declared on the problem of hunger in the world. SubhanAllah, if today any country in the world or all over the world or the United Nations if they follow the, the, the system that the Quran is giving, the hunger, the problem of the hunger can be taken care of. But the irony is that we Muslims who are supposed to reaching out to other people with the message of the Quran, we ourselves are not aware of what is in the Quran. Most of us, we are not aware what is in the Quran. Of course, we read the Quran for the blessing and the barakah, but the interaction with the Quran, this is what we need. Anyway, my respected brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, I will give you some more example. 
فك رقبة أو إطعام في يوم ذي مسقبة. You know what is عقبة? We have to jump that عقبة in order to get to the Jannah, in order to get to the prayer of Allah. And the ulama says عقبة is a mountain with seventy thousand years height that we have to jump in to get to the Jannah. And how we can get pass through it? We don't have power. But we can get through it by feeding somebody who is hungry. On a day, on a time when he is hungry or she is hungry. Subhanallah. And then Allah says, Ulaika ashabul maymana. They are the people that they Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless them. Besides this, my respected brothers, it's not our amal. It's not our efforts is going to protect us at the end of the day. But it is something that Allah gets pleased. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets more pleased when we take care of a needy person. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says those that they feed others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save them from the evil of that day. And they will be blessed, they will be protected because of what they have been offering. My respected brothers, in today's world, particularly the life that we are living, sharing food with other person is not a is not a problem. It's, it's, it's not even any issue. We spend more money by one trip with our family to the mall than sharing food with somebody. We spend more money when we go even for a little vacation over the weekend than sharing little food with somebody. This is something practically so easy for all of us. And it will really be something that we will be deprived of if we are not paying attention to that. And my respected brothers, I'll give you a couple of more examples. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that whatever little bit you can share, this is a protection for you from the hellfire. Ittaqun now. Protect yourself from the hellfire. Walau Even if it is piece of a date. What is the date? And what is how expensive is a date? But if that date is satisfying a hungry person, that is a protection from the hellfire. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked, Ayyul Islam khair? Which Islam is better, Ya Rasulullah? And he said, Your best Islam when you take care of a hungry person. Because that is the most basic need in the world, in the life. Life depends on food and nutrition. And this is what we are giving. When we are giving food, don't consider it. It is an, an orange or it is a bread. It is life that we are sharing. It is the, we are giving somebody health sharing with him and then you know what is the best thing that Allah loves when I remove somebody's hunger we don't know the people that they are not finding food what are their feelings when they get a good food and it does not cost us anything over here we can spend very little and we can feed so many people in different parts of the world. Now, one thing that I want to mention that the Quran amazingly is taking care of it, this problem. I mentioned to you that the Quran emphasizes to produce more food. The Quran emphasizes to plan and save the food. And the Quran emphasizes on distribution. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you are if you have committed a sin, you have fallen into the trap of shaitan, you have done something wrong, how can you be forgiven? Feed the hungry. Many, many of us, we take oath, by Allah, Allah ki qasam, I'm taking oath, and then we don't follow that. This is called kafaratul yameen, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you break your oath, you know what is the expiation? You have to feed 10 hungry people 
and Allah will forgive. There was a very dirty way of divorcing pre in the pre-Islamic Arabia, which was known as Zihar. That a person talks to his, about his, his wife like his, he's talking to his mom. And then that was a kind of divorce which was forbidden. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if somebody did like this, then the kafala is feed 60 hungry people. If a person intentionally break the fast in the month of Ramadan, still one of the form of the kafara is to feeding. So the, the hungry people. So this is the planning of the Quran. How we take it, the, it takes care of the problem of the hunger. My school brothers, what I want to mention today, that it's not only good things, but it is a very serious duty and responsibility if we don't take care of the hunger. You know what is the reason? One of the reasons people will be in the hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala quotes a conversation of two people in the hellfire in the Quran. And when he finds another person in the hellfire with him, what are you doing here? You were a good person. You were a good Muslim. You were telling us all the time good things. What happened? Ma salakakum fi sakar. My crime, I was not praying and I was not feeding the hungry. Subhanallah. That means a good person who is otherwise doing very good, but not paying attention to the salat and not taking care of the people around us can take that person to the hell. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns, Innahu kana la yuminu billah.